Imagine you're a single white blood cell. You realize that there is an infection in the body, say a bacterial infection, and you need to fight off that bacterial infection. Obviously, you cannot do it alone. You literally need an army of more white blood cells to fight off the infection. So how will you go about building that army? The first step in building that army is just this single cell dividing to form two new daughter cells. These two cells then form four cells and those four cells form more cells and so on. And in just a while, you have an army of cells to fight off the infection. So this process by which one cell divides to form two cells is known as mitosis and in the cell cycle, mitosis occurs after interphase. To learn more about what happens in interphase, you can check out our video on interphase. There are four different phases that occur in mitosis. Mitosis begins with prophase, the next is metaphase, the next is anaphase and the next is telophase. The actual cell division, the process by which the cell literally splits into two, occurs by the process of cytokinesis. But I just told you, mitosis is the process by which one cell becomes two. Then why have all these phases and why not just cytokinesis? Well, here is the catch. So a cell has a certain set of chromosomes. Say a human cell, a normal somatic cell in a human body will have 23 pairs of chromosomes. So as this cell divides and forms new daughter cells, each of this cell will also need 23 pairs of chromosomes. From where does this get the other 23 pair from? Because this cell has only one. Well, to sort this problem out, before mitosis can occur, in the interface, specifically in the S phase, the DNA is replicated. So at the end of S phase, the DNA is replicated and now there are 46 pairs of chromosomes. And it is through these phases where the 46 pairs are split into two 23 pairs. And then each of those 23 pairs are distributed to the two daughter cells. So that is why these four stages are there to split the nucleus, specifically the DNA. So that process is known as karyokinesis and that makes sure that each daughter cell gets the required number of chromosomes. Before we begin with prophase, let's refresh on how the cell looks like at the end of interphase, specifically at the end of G2 phase. It has its plasma membrane, the nuclear membrane is intact. The nucleolus is present inside the nucleus and DNA exists in the form of chromatin. Now chromatin is a highly coiled network of DNA fibers along with RNA and other protein molecules. Under a microscope, it is visible like a tangled ball of yarn. But remember that because the cell has crossed S phase already, the chromatin now has replicated DNA. While DNA is getting replicated in the nucleus, in the cytoplasm, there is something called centrosomes that also undergo replication in the S phase. So each cell has one centrosome and in the S phase it divides to form two centrosomes. And each centrosome is made up of two centrioles. These tube-like structures that you see here, this is a centriole. So now this cell progresses into mitosis where the first phase is prophase. Now prophase is the longest phase in mitosis because there is a lot of things that happen in prophase. It is often split into intermediate phases for our convenience. It could be early prophase, late prophase or even pro-metaphase. At the beginning of prophase, the cell looks something like this. And the major thing that is happening as prophase begins to occur is the chromatin condensed to form chromosomes. The chromosomes are the structures of DNA that we are familiar with. This X-shaped structure that we are familiar with, that is a chromosome. And chromatin condenses to form chromosomes as prophase begins. So as the chromosomes are condensing, we can see that each of the chromosome is made up of two sister chromatids. And as the chromosomes condense further, the sister chromatids will be more visible as prophase progresses. So the centrosomes that were earlier located close to each other start moving towards opposite ends of the cell in prophase. 
and as the centrosomes move towards opposite ends the microtubules also emerge from the centrosomes and the microtubules these tube like structures form the mitotic spindle apparatus or the spindle apparatus in mitosis and they are important for the actual splitting of chromosomes now pro metaphase can be thought of as an intermediate phase between prophase and metaphase it can also be thought of as late prophase so a lot happens in pro metaphase the main thing that marks the progress of prophase is the dissolution of the nuclear membrane it begins to dissolve now why is this important the nuclear membrane is what covers the nucleus and that is what keeps the dna inside the nucleus if the dna is inside the nucleus it cannot move to the cytoplasm and it needs to move to the cytoplasm so that it can be split between two new cells for the dna to move into the cytoplasm the nuclear membrane has to dissolve and by the end of prophase as metaphase begins the nuclear membrane would have dissolved completely the chromosomes have fully condensed into two sister chromatids they are clearly visible and the two sister chromatids are attached to each other at the centromere the centrosomes have completely moved to the opposite ends of the cell to opposite poles and they have begun to radiate more and more microtubules and each of these microtubules come and attach to the sister chromatids on each side so the microtubule from this centrosome emerges and attaches to this sister chromatid the microtubule from this centrosome comes and attaches to this sister chromatid the location in which the microtubule attaches at the sister chromatids is known as kinetochore and kinetochore is just a part of centromere it's not a separate structure it's just a part of the centromere and then as prophase progresses even more the microtubules pull the sister chromatids so that all the chromatids can align in a single plane that is what happens in metaphase metaphase is characterized by the arrangement of the chromosomes at the metaphase plate which is an imaginary plate at the center of the cell now why is this important this is important for the proper splitting of the sister chromatids and also for the splitting of the cell we'll get to that in just a while in this picture you can see there are two types of microtubules one is the microtubules attached to kinetochores attached to sister chromatids this is a microtubule attached to a sister chromatid this is known as kinetochore microtubule there are more microtubules that radiate from one end and attached to the microtubule emerging from the other end they are just attached to each other those are called polar microtubules now what is the function of kinetochore microtubules and polar microtubules why do we need two types to understand that let's move on to the next phase of mitosis anaphase is characterized by the splitting of the sister chromatids to opposite poles of the cell so these two were initially attached to each other at the centromere the microtubule is now pulling this towards this side and this microtubule is now pulling this towards this side now how does the microtubule pull the chromatid so what happens is the kinetochore microtubules shorten so this was initially this long at the metaphase plate this microtubule was initially this long as it shortens in length it is still attached to the kinetochore of this sister chromatid right it pulls the sister chromatids apart and pulls it towards this pole centromere first so this is the centromere this is facing the pole of the cell so that is how these microtubules shorten and pull the sister chromatids apart so as the kinetochore microtubules shorten and the sister chromatids are pulled apart they are now called daughter chromosomes so that is the job of kinetochore microtubules then what about the polar microtubules if you would have noticed the shape of the cell is not entirely spherical while the other cells in the previous phases the prophase and metaphase those cells were more spherical and this is somewhat oval in shape the change in the shape of this cell is caused by the lengthening of polar microtubules so these polar microtubules lengthen which causes the cell to elongate and this cell elongation is needed for the cell to eventually split into two telophase is the last phase in mitosis 
telophase can be thought of as the reverse of prophase the nuclear membrane begins to reform again and chromosomes which were clearly visible till now begin to decondense and form chromatin again so chromosomes are essentially formed only when the cell divides that too only during the prophase and the transition into metaphase that is when they are clearly visible after the karyokinesis that is the splitting of sister chromatids has occurred the chromosomes begin to decondense and form chromatin again microtubules also begin to disappear they have pulled the sister chromatids to opposite poles of the cell and they have done their job so they also begin to disappear so all that is left to do now is the actual splitting of the two cells that is cytokinesis and for cytokinesis to occur the formation of the cleavage furrow happens so the cleavage furrow is what splits the cell into two cells these cells are still attached to each other somewhat as the cleavage furrow deepens the cell pinches off and splits into two cells now this process is quite simple and occurs without any hitch in animal cells but in plant cells there is a single complication the presence of cell wall the cell wall also needs to reform as the plant cell is dividing so take a look at the plant cell here that has been stained this shows the cells in different stages of mitosis if you take your focus to this cell specifically you'll see that this is at the telophase you can see clearly the sister chromatids have split and there is a faint line in between these two cells that line is the cell plate and cell plate is like a precursor to the formation of new cell wall so at the end of cytokinesis the cell has finished dividing into two new cells and each cell has a complete set of chromosomes too but it's not in the form of chromosomes it is in the form of chromatin but the entire set of dna is there which is genetically identical to the parent cell which is genetically identical means there is no change in the dna sequence so mitosis results in genetically identical cells 